Otherwise, if he's talking a different language, we can understand him. Alayhi wa ala is a human being. The other side of the ayah. Yuha ilay. I receive wahi. One, I am a human being. The other one, I receive wahi. Qul inna ma ana basharam mithlukam. Yuha ilay. Oftentimes, we have to look at the entire ayah and try to separate to understand what it means. Everything in this universe has two sides. Just like this ayah has two sides to it. Things in this world have two sides to it. Side that you can see. And side that is conceited. There's an apparent side, an obvious side to things. And there is a conceited side to things. And in order for you to understand the full truth of anything, you really need to know both the apparent side of that thing and the conceited side of that thing as well. I'll give you examples, and most of you know the examples. The earth that we live on. The earth that we live on seems very uh, straightforward. You drive, look, everything is straight. People in the old days, you all know, and Galileo and all, and all of them, when he was trying to tell them that earth was not really flat, he was almost killed. People would, what do you mean it's not flat? It looks flat to me. So many times we believe facts just because we, our senses tell us that they are real. Are they really real? That's the point. Just because your senses tell you something is real does not necessarily mean it's real. Al-Quran wants you to learn this. Why? Because we are limited by what we know. Right? And what we know is very limited. We are limited by what we know. Absolutely. And what we know is very limited. Okay. So you look at earth, you think it's flat. It looks flat, seems flat, feels flat. It means what? It's probably flat. It's not flat. So therefore, if you only look at earth from only basar, from a vision point of view, from senses point of view, from the obvious, obvious side of, of earth, you will only get half the truth. But oftentimes, half truth are not truth at all. They're false. But yet al-basira, which is represented by the heart, the mind, and the soul. Al-qalb wal aql wa ruh. Al-basar is represented by the senses, the vision, the hearing, the eyes, etc., etc. But al-basira is represented by the heart, the mind, and the soul. The heart, the mind, and the soul tell you that earth is not really flat. Earth is actually oval. Another example, this same earth that we live on seems very quiet, very nice, a lot of greenery in, that, in this earth. But that's only what's obvious to you. And all of you know, because of the intellect, the mind, because al-basira, you know that earth actually is not that peaceful at all. Because we are living on a shell of earth, actually, which is very, very narrow, very thin compared to earth. The core of earth is a boiling magma reaching thousands and thousands and thousands of temperature. If it's released on anything, it'll destroy it, as you see in the volcanoes. So really, uh, one obvious side is that you have to know the conceited side as well, that you can't really see with your senses. The tree. When you look at a tree, what do you see from a tree? You look at a tree, you see... Uh, yeah, yeah. You see a stem, you see branches, you see leaves. But if someone comes and tells you, well, the tree consists of stem, branches, and leaves, is he telling the truth? Because he forgot the most important part of the tree, the roots. See, the eye, the basa, sees the stem, branches, and sees the leaves. But the basa, the vision, does not see the roots, only the basira. Only the mind, the heart, and the soul see the roots. Only if you say that the tree consists of roots in addition to stem branch, then you have given the full truth. Therefore, in order for us to know the full truth, we have to have an encompassing idea of the entire picture. You cannot say this, you cannot give half of the picture. Al-Quran Karim wants us to learn these things. 
As-Sirah Nabawiyah Sharifa wants you to learn these things. In this ayah, Allah wants to take you to these places so you can understand what the meanings of the ayahs are. Therefore, in Quran Al-Kareem, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Innaha la ta'mal absar, walakin ta'mal qulubu lati fi sudur. The meaning of the ayah, visions, the sight is not blind. Al-Basa, which is the sight, is not blind, Allah says. إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَفْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ What is blind? الْقُلُوبُ الْقَلْبَ عَمَا الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ The heart is blind. The heart is blind. The basar is fine. Okay. So Al-Quran is what? Look at what he tells the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَتَرَاهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا يُبْصِرُونَ You see them, the meaning of the ayah, you see them looking at you but they don't see. What do you mean looking and they don't see? Because they're looking with their basar, that's blind. They're looking with their senses. They only see that the tree is only the stem, the branches and the leaves. They don't see the roots. Oftentimes the conceited side is the one that dictates the apparent side. Because the roots dictate what kind of tree it is. They look at the Prophet why is this prophet? If he's a messenger, why is he walking among people? Why does he go to the markets to buy things? What are they looking with? They're looking at the Prophet ﷺ with their eyes, with their basa. They're not looking with their basira. Because the basira is one, as the Quran says. The problem with al qalb al-a'ma, or the blind heart, is disastrous. Because those who have blind hearts, Nowadays, in the dunya, will end up having blind hearts also in the akhirah. Those who are blind, he will be blind there. But we don't mean by blind, blind vision. Notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran Kareem, وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَعْمَى فَهُوَ فِي الْأَخِرَةِ فِي أَعْمَى وَضَلُ سَبِيلًا Whoever is blind in this dunya, he's more blind in the akhirah, and more misguided. What's the point here? Number one, Vigrats by themselves, al is not enough by itself. Because Allah says, Number two, whoever is blind in this dunya is blind in the akhirah. Why? Because they couldn't see in this dunya. And the dunya is the form of the akhirah. And therefore they will be more blind in the akhirah. Number three, then what? What kind of heart should we have? A blind heart? A blind heart won't serve a cause. A blind heart will lead to distraction or destruction, then what would we have? Allah tells you, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the day, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ قَلْبٍ means سَلِيمٍ means pure, receptive. Notice, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلَ بِصَارٍ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ لَتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Sights are not blind, the eyes are not blind, but the hearts are blind. Then Allah says, which means, whoever is blind in the dunya is blind in the akhirah, in the hereafter. And Allah then says, which means, in a day where nothing helps. No money, and offspring, and power, and all these things do not help. What helps? Only those who don't come with a blind heart. They come with a pure heart. With an open heart. Why? If they have an open heart and a pure heart, that means they have basira. The soul, the mind, and the infinite. Now who has... Al-Quran cannot just give you a problem without a solution. Al-Quran never gave us a problem and did not give us a solution. Al-Quran always gave us a problem and they stressed on the solution. What's the solution? Allah says you have to have qalb salim, you can't have qalb a'ma. Who has the qalb salim? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Allah says, Among the Shia of Nuh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Shia means loyal, the group who are loyal to. Allah says, Among the groups who are loyal to, the people who are loyal to Nuh alayhi salam, وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ Ibrahim alayhi salam al-Khalil. He is the one who follows and is faithful and loyal to Nuh. On the same way, إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ He came to his, his Lord with a pure heart. The ayah tells you that Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham alayhi salam, 
and Nuh, the line of Abraham and the line of Ibrahim is the line of who? Of those who have pure hearts. Those who have Bar and Basira. They see the apparent, the conceited things. They see all these things, they have an entire picture of truth. Many times, when you look at someone praying, Allah, Rukur, Sujush, everything, Qira, is he praying? What's the secret prayer? Sabr salah al ikhlas. Sincerity to Allah. You can pray all night long without sincerity. All that doesn't matter. See, the apparent side tells you this person is praying. But in truth is, if he doesn't have sincerity then, there's no praying. It's false. Therefore, when judging things and looking at things, don't rush into judgments. Try to see all, all around, all corner wide, an encompassing picture. When you look at the Prophet ﷺ, most of them were weak in their apparent side. Most of them were poor in their apparent side. Most of them were uh, oppressed in their apparent side. Most of them were subjugated in their apparent side. Most of them were, had no say in their apparent side. But is that the truth? Most of them were killed. Most of the prophets were killed. Most of the prophets were, were slaughtered. Truth was never popular, is never popular. It's just the way it is. When you look at the money, you see the money was Tarun. When you look at the might and the power, you see the might and the power was Fir'aun. When you look at Musa, you see no money and no apparent power. A man who is very, who is old, wearing rough clothes, beard, stick that he walks with, and he is sent with the message. He goes, Allah says, إِذْهَبَا إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى He goes to Pharaoh to talk to Pharaoh. Musa is knocking the door to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the one who said, I am your only your Lord. Because they will go little by little, little by little. Dictatorship starts first little. My opinion goes, and then it becomes until they say, I am your supreme Lord. Ya qawm ma min ilahin ghayri. Oh people, I don't know any other Lord for you other than me. So everyone called him Lord. They couldn't call him a king anymore. You call him a king, you're disbelieving in the Lord. So they called Pharaoh the Lord. And he called himself the Lord. Okay. Pharaoh comes, uh, Afwan Musa alayhi salam comes, and tells the people that he wants to meet Pharaoh. And the people around Pharaoh, before they get to him, they said, you want to meet the Lord? Look at you. How are you dressed? Someone like you, from this social, supposedly the apparent social economic level. Look for out. Of course, the people were looking at the apparent side because the Basira, Al Basra was, was active, but Al Basira was inactive, was blind. Their vision is 20 over 20. But their heart is blind. Upon the insistence of Musa alayhi salam, they let him in. That man who let Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in, looked at Musa, saw him and went to Pharaoh and said, this is a man, and old clothes, all these things, he, and he wants to talk to you. He insists on talking to you. He has a stick. The man, when he looked at Musa alayhi salam, Moses alayhi salam, he, he saw him, saw him with this kind of clothing and kind of thing, and he saw the stick with him, but he, that the stick that Musa was holding in his hand, the oceans would listen to it. Just throw your stick, it will become a snake. Throw your stick, it will open up a highway in the ocean. But that stick that you're walking with it. He couldn't see that. Okay. He goes to Pharaoh, in the madras of Pharaoh, Pharaoh looks at Musa alayhi salam, and he tells his people, I'm anah ladhi huwa maheen. Wala yakalu yubi. For Quran al-Kareem, Allah tells on behalf of Pharaoh, Pharaoh is looking at Musa, and he's saying, am I not better, the meaning of the ayah, am I not better than this man who is dressed like this? And not even distinguished, I mean, if he says he's a messenger of God, then how come he's like this? فَلَوْلَا أُنزِلْ عَلَيْهِ أَسْوَرْتُمْ مِنْ ذَهَبْ If he was truly a messenger of the Quran, Quran again, why wasn't he given gold around him? He would have all these chains, all these gifts of gold, and he would come, see how... They measure the importance and the significance of people.
How much gold do you have with you? Nowadays, that's how people deal with people. How much money do you have with you? It comes from Fir'aun. Allah for Quran says, if he, really had, if he really was the messenger of God, he would have all this gold with him. And then of course, let's move from Fir'aun. Let's go to Quraysh. Quraysh themselves. The people of Quraysh. They look at the Prophet sallallahu an orphan. His father died. This was their problem. Yeah. At that time, in the tribal situation, until today, those who are in tribes, it's very tough if your father dies. Because then in the tribe, you know that there's no succession for you. You're never going to reach up there. In the tribal leadership, your father died. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, his father passed away when he wasn't even born. And uh, you can eat orphan. The people of Quraysh, they listen to the Quran, they see, subhanAllah, this Quran is true. It, it sounds true, it sounds right. But then they don't. They say, ala rajulin min ahli The meaning of the ayah means, why wasn't this Quran healed or great in this village? Who is greater than Rasulullah? So there is no one among the creation. The Prophet is the creation, the greatest of the creation entirely. But they're not seeing that. They want this Quran to be revealed on someone who has more power, more political power, more money, more, more, more. They're not getting the pictures. What ha what's happening here is what? Al Basar is active again, Al Basira is in hand. Yes. See, after the Prophet was born, it was, a, it was customary. For people, for many of these, these women in the old days, tribes, from other tribes, to come to Mecca and breastfeed some whose parents from rich families. In the old days, rich families would have people nursing for them. In other words, if you're from a rich family, your mother would not breastfeed you. She will hire someone who breastfeeds you. This is a sign of from a uh, high economic level, if we were to say. All the women came, and they run to pick up whoever is most important. Halima Sa'diyah, she says, I came late. All of my companions, other women who want to breastfeed, they came ahead of me. I took everybody. And all I found is, I asked who is he, they told me he is an orphan. I left with him, everybody took, she came ahead of me, took an orphan. She said, I stood in front of him, and then in myself, in my heart, I take him. It's like now you're doing him the favor, not, not, not vice versa. Okay. So she took him. And you all know what happened, all the barakah and all the blessings that she has, and her, even uh, in her land and in her uh, cities. And the Nabi wasallam kept honoring her after she passed away by honoring her kids and honoring her tribe and sending them gifts and all these things. Anyway, let's take two journeys. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The first journey is the migration. Hijrah. From Mecca to Medina. The people of Mecca persecuted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Trying to damage his da'wah, trying to prevent his da'wah every time, every opportunity they can. And Nabi Adam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam landed. Of course Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the best of those who send us, uh, the, who give us these plans. And again, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated under this pressure, tremendous pressure in Mecca, forced almost to leave, depart Mecca, and go all the way to Medina. He took Abu Bakr anhu with him, left Ali anhu in, his, uh, in his bed as the first uh, possible martyr of Islam, because they were going to go and just kill him and they didn't know. And went through this hijrah, this migration, and as you all know, this migration to Medina was a migration of hardships. In the desert, going from one cave to another cave, the kuffar are after him, now they found out he left, they're all after him, they want to kill him, they want to make sure he does not leave Mecca so people don't listen to him. The problem was back then, still, that people do not want you to be hurt. Because if they know if it's what they're saying, and if they're hurt, it's going to be a problem, because they're not on, they are on the untruth. Okay. Difficulty trip. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I mean, among the narrations, until his feet were bleeding, going all the way to Mecca. Look at this. 
And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, one time he walks on the right, one time he walks on the left, one time he walks, one time he walks in the front, one time he walk, one time he walks in the back of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells him, well, "Yeah, Abu Bakr, why are you walking like this?" He said, "Ya Rasulullah, just in case an arrow comes, one time I walk, one time I walk on the other side. It doesn't hit you. It hits me instead." Look at this. Difficulty. People are after them, but they're going behind them. One Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam walk in the desert, goes to the this tent of these people, this tent until days and nights. Now you try to walk it from Mecca to Medina in the desert, you're gonna die. If you so many dangers until today. And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam until he reached very long trip, very difficult and very torturous trip. <laughs> Another trip he took, much much longer in distance than Mecca to Medina, from Mecca to Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem through the entire heavens, much longer trip in distance. Al Burak came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Jibril alayhi salam telling Ya Rasulullah, ride on this vehicle, and this vehicle will transport you from Mecca to Jerusalem in a split second, and then you will go through heavens, spaceship. This this vehicle turns out to be split second, seconds within minutes. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to. Jerusalem prayed to the Prophet went until he read all the way to the All the way south of them and came back. Within minutes, his bed was still warm. Two journeys. The question is, why wasn't why was the Prophet subjected to difficulties in Hijrah and migration? Why wasn't Al Wurak given to him? So he can just write Al Wurak and go from Makkah to Madinah the story. Just like he did from Mecca to Jerusalem and to heavens. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul innama anashurun mithyukum yuhayla. I am a human being like you. Because he is an example for us. Nabi Adam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an example for us. Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. He is an example for everyone to follow. He is an example to follow in his human side. But he is a prophet. He receives wahi. When he migrates, he migrates like you and me. <coughs> In a sense that he has to put the effort, he has to plan, he has to do this, and he will suffer, and there will be difficulties, and there will be <coughs> pain. But when he goes to to Al Samawat Al Ula, when he goes to Hijrah. He will not suffer because he's a prophet. You highlight. That's the other side of Allah. Nobody's asking you to go do Isra and Mi'raj. But people are, but you are asked to do hijrah for your deen. You are asked to secure your deen. You are asked to safeguard your deen. You are asked to practice your deen. But no one tells you go to fly to Jerusalem with Al-Buraq or go to the seventh heaven. And Nabi Adam sallallahu is not a, a role model for you in that because we are not. Those who judge the Prophet from a strictly human point of view, they left the other side of the ayah, you highlight, I receive wahi. I'm not like one of you. I stay, when I, at night, I stay with my Lord. He feeds me and He gives me drinks. So, they didn't, they didn't see the whole thing. That's why the narration says the day that he was, uh, uh, that he announced his message, or the day he was born, like this, the narrations, two ways. What did you see the day he was born? Apparent things that the eye saw. The lake of Sawa was drained. The uh, palace of Kisra of the king of Persia was shaken. The fire in, in Fisham. Huh? All these things people saw. But what people didn't see, what Al-Quran mentions, وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ فَوَجَدْنَاهَا مُلِعَ تَحَرَسًا شَدِيدًا وَشُهُبًا On behalf of the jinn, Surah Al-Jinn, go go to Surah Al-Jinn. Notice what Al-Quran says. The jinn are saying, that day we looked at the skies and we saw it filled with guards and comets that are burning anyone who gets close. Things that people didn't see with us, but we know now with our hearts and minds. 
and the Quran tells us these things. Therefore, when dealing with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, when trying to understand the personality of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi we should not just be using what is only mediated by the vision and the senses. We should have also our basira open. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul hadihi sabili ad'u ila Allahi ala basa? No. Ala basira thin ana wa man itala. الحمد لله الحمد لله كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأنا ممن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خاتم الأنبياء المعتبى صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثار وعلى من بأثار المتفى واعتبر عباد الله اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقواه وراقبوه مراقبة ويعتقد بأنه يراه وتزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضاه لموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويعطي ويمنع ويصل ويقطع ويقفل ويرفع إلا الله وعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثمنا بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون